This looks like I conned Amy into going to the butcher with me to get some tasty beef ribs to cook. But ribs can be tough unless you cook them right. The 3 2 one method is a simple way to cook tender ribs. So if these look tasty and you want to see how I cook them, then stay tuned as I smoke some mighty tasty beef ribs. Um, this is the back and we have some silver skin. Now normally you want to remove this stuff because it doesn't really offer any flavor and it keeps seasoning, smoke, everything else from penetrating it. Plus it's just, I don't know, it could be nasty. But sometimes it's hard to get off. So what you do is you just start, take a knife, get a little bit started, and then you just take like a wet paper towel or napkin and you start pulling. And I got a little bit started here. You can kind of hear it pulling. You just work with it. Sometimes if you go to a barbecue joint, sometimes they pull the stuff, sometimes they don't. I'm used to pulling it on a spare ribs, which are really slippery. And that's where the paper towel helps, especially if you wet it a little bit. Uh, these ones are a little bit drier and not as slimy. So. All right, close enough for government work. I got the bulk of it off. This guy has a little bit of a fat cap. We're just gonna pretty much leave him in place. You can see here some meat. Got some marbling there. Here's the bones. So we've got a bone there. All this is meat. This is all meat. That's wonderful. So literally this thing is, is a good, you know, 10 to 12 inches long. I mean, it's, it's a big hunker. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, doing some damage to this guy. Now, one of the things I want to do here is get some seasonings on here, right? So let's get started. First of all, we're gonna use yellow mustard. Why? Because it does wonderful things. We actually learned to do this when we did barbecue comps, uh, when we uh, put anything with rub on. It could be, seriously, it could be our pork shoulder, it could be brisket, it was our spare ribs. Chicken, I think, was the only thing we didn't do it with. I've done it on chicken. You did on chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Not for competition, but I did it. Okay. The, the thing is, you don't taste the mustard, okay? The mustard does a few things. It has an acid in it, so it somehow changes the texture of the meat just a little bit. It gives it like a paste to attach the uh, rub to, so the rub sticks on. And, I mean, we got smoke, we got good stuff permeating this meat here. Why not give it a little love? Give it some mustard, right? So... That's what we're going to do here. So we're just going to apply it liberally here. Flip it here. All right. Eh. Should be good enough. And yeah, we'll just do that. The seasoning, you can use any rub you like or just use salt and pepper. It's what you want. This is beef, so I like to keep things simple. So this little concoction I made, I just use some kosher uh, salt because it's uh, coarse. I don't want to use table salt because I wouldn't be able to put much on there, right? Because it would make it way too salty. Um, I also used um, coarse ground pepper and I also used uh, granulated onion and granulated uh, garlic in a ratio of one to one on everything. So in this case, I have four tablespoons of stuff but I can use it on this, and I can use it on my next meal, because I'm gonna have fun seasoning that too. So. I just wanna go ahead and, I don't know. If you want pretty color, I suppose, you could put some paprika in here, because that'll make it kind of um, the usual color everybody's used to, right? I'll throw some back on here just in case. Right. 
we are ready to put this on the smoker. You can go ahead and do anything you want with your ribs. You can marinate them in whatever sauce you want ahead of time. Um, just be aware that sugar and some other things at a high temperature can caramelize and turn black on you and that might create off flavors. So just keep that in mind depending upon if you're going to be doing this in the oven, grill, or on a smoker. Me, we're going to be cooking this at 250 for five hours today. All right, we got um, bone facing the camera there. This is meat side down. We're going to put meat side down because that's how I want to start it. Normally, this is a simple process. I call it the 321. If I can cook at 225, doesn't matter if it's the oven, grill, or smoker, then three hours, meat side down. Two hours, we're gonna put in foil with a little bit of liquid. We'll show that in just a, a moment here when it gets there. And then the last hour is exposed to smoke at the end, and then if you wanna sauce it, you can. But depending upon what temperature you cook at, like today we're at 250, I'm not gonna cook for six hours. I'm only gonna cook for five hours. So this is gonna be a two, two, one. Two hours exposed to smoke two hours um, steaming in the foil and then one hour at the end. So let's get that going. Right now I have Kingsford um, in, the, in the bottom. This is a Weber Smoky Mountain WSM. It's a vertical water cooker. So I have a pot of a pan of hot water to help uh, with humidity and stuff. We also have a couple of uh, wood chunks in there. I like oak, but today apple seemed to get my attention. So I have a couple big chunks in there that's contributing all this smoke. So I think this is gonna be lovely when we're all done. So without further ado, let's start the timer. It's been a couple of hours. Now, for those of you guys who are really paying attention, why is meat side up? Because you saw it go meat side down. Because I just rotated it to make it easier for me to do this little step that we're about to do. So we're gonna be foiling it because we're gonna want to steam this bad boy. This is something that you do to help tenderize it and make it all wonderful and stuff. Um, if you can see right here, we have a little bit of bonage right there, a little bit of bonage right there. So it's already peeling back a little bit, but it's probably gonna do a little bit more in here. Yeah, let's see, we'll go right there, I guess. So right now I've got two layers of heavy duty aluminum foil, because I wanna make sure that when I seal it, we're good. I also wanna make sure that I've got a liquid in here to help steam. And you can use almost anything you want that's a liquid. You can use butter, margarine. Um, apple juice is good if you're doing pork. This is going to be um, beef, so I'm going to use a little beer. Got to do a beer check, boo. Make sure it, um, <laughs> Not too much now. Make sure it is what they say it is. Yep, I can confirm it is beer. So. All right. So. I'm going to do that. Make sure I can... What I want to do here is I want to bring the ends in, bring these guys up, and seal it at the top. I was trying to bring the sides up and then tighten it down, but it's not um, long enough for me. So I'm going to take care of that one second with another piece. So wait one second. All right, let's see if we can do this again here. And just do something like this. And then the sides are already sealed, so we're good like that. So at this point, we got a good amount of liquid in there. Got it really tight on here. 
and now we can go ahead and cook. And like I said, it's based on the temperature that you're using. We're either going to go one hour or two hour in, hours in here. Um, I'm probably going to do one hour minimum. I may do as much as two. It just depends upon the smoker. Um, he hasn't been cooperating too well with me today. So um, we'll be back after the ribs have cooked. All right. Some of the fun part, let's see how hot this is. Let's see if I can deal with it. We're obviously going to unfoil this part. So with any luck, these beef ribs have um, had a chance to shrink a little, but not too much. But more importantly, get steamed, aka braising and all that lovely beer that we put in there, right? And uh, hopefully that got a little tender. Got a lot of steam in there, that's always a good thing. Oh yeah. So. Oh, they came back clean a little. All right, so. Oh, geez, that liquid is pretty hot. <laughs> it was only 225 degrees. How could that be hot, right? So we have a combination of um, uh, grease from the fat rendering, and then we also have the beer. So you can see it pulled back the meat a little bit, which tells me that um, a lot of goodness happened, and that's what it's supposed to do. But it didn't pull back too much. Now, if it pulled back here, I'd be in trouble, right? There wouldn't be anything to eat. So uh, memo to anybody cooking bison ribs, go careful. <laughs> Because that meat's lean, it cooks way faster than this stuff does. So my goal here is to not make a total mess. All right, I hear something leaking. I can only imagine I have a hole in some of this renderings made down in there. So, all right. So, cut it out of the foil. Looks pretty good. Um, we have about an hour of cook time left. So maybe half hour, I don't know. So if you were gonna sauce, you know, you'd wanna put some sauce on maybe 15, 20 minutes before you decide to pull it off. Me, I'm not gonna sauce, I'm gonna eat it in its natural state here. So um, we'll be back a little bit when it's had a chance to uh, cook a little more. All right. Yeah. We did it. Anytime you do a barbecue, we're not talking grilling, we're talking barbecue. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint, right? It's not a matter of who's got the most smoke up front or towards the end. It's how well can you maintain your temps during the whole cooking time because that's all that matters, right? Each animal you cook is different. It may take a little longer, may take a little, and you need to adjust. You know how your equipment runs, you need to do your best, right? Whether it rains, snows, or whatever, do your best people will appreciate it. Why? Because you put your heart and soul into it and it tastes skippy good. Skippy good? Skippy good. But when you cook for your, your family and friends, they really appreciate it. So we had some challenges with this um, cook tonight. Um, my goal was 225 for six hours. It was closer to 250. So I cut the cooking time by an hour because that seems to work. But then in the middle, it shot up to 300 and change. Um, let's just say my WSM out there's got more holes in it than a stop sign that's met a shotgun, okay? <laughs> uh, you can only put aluminum in so many holes, right? <laughs> it's smoke and heat, it's still gonna find its way out. So you have to adjust. And does Boo want a that new? WSMs. These are these are my old WSMs. These are the ones that we use for comps. Um, they're like 13 years old. The one in the garage is probably in better shape because this one's been outside. Even though it had a cover on it, it still um, got a lot of moisture and none of the vents work and it is hard to control temps with it. But I did the cook anyways. Um, but knowing all that, I decided to pull the meat a half hour early because I felt it warranted that. So this beef ribs were only cooked for four and a half hours at an average temperature of 250 plus. Although the last two hours, 
it was 225. That held steady for me, finally. But by then, it was cooked. So I definitely want to overcook it. So without further ado, we pulled it off the grill, or grill, we pulled off the smoker, um, let it rest for about a good 15 minutes, because that's what you do, right? And uh, I think it's ready to be shown to the world. So because this is beef, um, I don't really want to put a sauce on it. You know, if it was spare ribs, you know, I'd put probably Sweet Baby Ray's or some rip off. But see that? Ooh, ah, yeah. See that? It just looks amazing. So we got the bones pull back. I don't know, Amy. Looks almost like we Frenched a bunch of pork chops. It's huge. This thing started out, um, I don't know, really. Each, each bone was about a pound and three quarters. Okay, this, this guy was not cheap. That's all I can tell you. This was a local cow that donated his ribs for us. Because there's not too many ribs on an animal and some person ran off with all the other ones, I only got two. Amy's like, you did this whole cook for just two ribs? So yeah, these aren't spare ribs. These aren't like little dinky, you know, appetizers. The, each one is a meal. So I'm ready. I hope you are too. So let's get to cutting here. All right, this is a Yaxel Dragon knife. It's a chef knife. Should be able to handle this. We're not cutting through bones. We're just cutting some meat. And oops, do you see what I see, boo? Okay. Yeah, I see juices just ripping out here. It's top heavy. Is it supposed to be pink? The pink is from the smoke. Oh. The, the, the meat is well done because it's all gray. So it's overdone. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not cooking it to medium rare. You have to cook it well done to tender, to get it tender. This, unlike a steak. Tell them that. So, unlike a steak. Yeah, you gotta, oh. you gotta break this down. So. All right, now that you've had a chance to uh, look at the goods, ribs are a little different than steaks, right? Steaks, with, uh, unless you love them well done, um, ribs are, are tough, right? Um, so you need to cook them long enough so it breaks down and becomes tender. Um, so there is no, oh, I'm gonna cook it till it's medium rare. You don't cook a rib till it's medium rare, okay, sorry. Um, you do got to cook it, but you have to cook it in a certain way to break things down. It's no different than trying to cook shoulder that's got a lot of muscles and sinew tissues and stuff. You got to make it where it's edible here. The pink here is just smoke. That's all it is. Amy thought, oh my gosh, that's rare. No, it's not. That's smoke. Smoke will make things pink. Now in competitions, they're not supposed to go by color because what do you think you use on bacon? Sodium nitrites, nitrites and nitrates, they make things pink. So you could sit there with chemicals and make your meat all pink. And people are like, oh, he's got a bigger smoke ring. It went all the way through, you know, no. Um, so you don't do that. You just need, in this case, a quarter of an inch shows enough. The um, fat rendered quite a bit. You saw when I cut it, um, it squished. That shows it's juicy. So we still have a little bit of fat which is good for flavor and for juiciness. But the meat looks great. And because it's beef, it's huge. You know, this started out almost two pounds of bone. So um, without further ado, I want to start eating this stuff. You agree, boo? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> she ate a turkey burger. She's full. She doesn't care anymore. <laughs> so let's see here. I don't know. Barbecue is finger food. So let's just go ahead. Yeah, screw it. I'm just gonna take a bite. So, cheers. Oh. What? That thing is huge. Mmm. Mm. Just a little chewy, but nothing bad. Mmm. So obviously we got smoke, we got the 
um, rub that I put on there. So yes, it is a little salty, but you know, you got the balance of the pepper, the garlic and the onion on there, which beef loves, right? It's dripping. Well, it's dripping because there's a lot of, there's a lot of fat in this and you know, some it's going to render, some won't. And, um, it's just dripping. It's just wonderful. Now, if I would have dried it out, right, then that would have been ugly, right? You know, to me, beef ribs is kind of like a, like a special event. Well, you know, because spare ribs, you know, if you go to most rib joints, you're just going to get pork. And they taste good and everything. But a lot of places don't have beef ribs. Now, maybe if you're in the South, maybe if you're like Texas, of course, has it. Maybe the Midwest has it, but a lot of places on the East Coast, they just, they just do spare ribs and you eat it and, or baby backs. But to get uh, beef ribs, it's like, ooh, right? So it's kind of neat. So I like this. I think the level of doneness was good. So for, if you're going to try to tackle something like this, um, it's not like you're cooking to a temperature. You're cooking to a time based on what your cooking temperature is. So to me, the three, two, one method works great. Three hours exposed to smoke, or if it's in your oven, just expose it to the oven temperature or on a gas grill, expose it to the air for three hours. If you're cooking at 225, if you're going to cook it at 250, take an hour off of that. If you're going to cook at 275, you got to take another hour off. Okay. The two, is when you're going to foil it up. You really want to foil it for two hours. But once again, if you're cooking around 275 or 300, you got to take an hour off of that. And then of course you have the last hour where it's just exposed to the air or whatever smoke. You don't want to over smoke in a smoker because it's going to taste like um, tires. Don't go in there like I did on a first cook and just throw not charcoal, but wood chunks. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. When meat gets to a certain temperature, somewhere around like 140 temperature degrees or something like that, any smoke just is like creosote. It doesn't penetrate, it just sits on top. It's ugly. So you really gotta watch that. A um, Couple hours at the beginning, you're good. Or if you're gonna do it in the oven, fine. Oven, if you want a little humidity, put a bowl of water in there. So it's a little bit of a potential bath. That might help keep it from trying to dry out. But it's got plenty of fat, at least this one did. So that was pretty good. So I definitely give this a two thumbs up. So I hope you learned something. I hope you're not gonna be like the lady at the big box tool store who boiled her meat in an effort to tenderize it so the guys could grill it the next day. I wish she would have known at a minimum, just put it in foil, let it braise, let it steam. That at a minimum will help out but you gotta cook this a long time. Low and slow works. So hopefully that helps you out. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And obviously we love comments. Go to our website at amylearnsofcook.com. We will put the recipe up there. I'll put my little guide up there, the three, two, one, recommended temperatures and times. Um, we're on Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook. And we're on Instagram at Cooking with Amy. You got any closing shots, boo? Yeah, that's... A lot of meat, huh? <laughs> if I didn't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>